What is the best strategy to prevent cervical cancer in Norway? Should we switch from pap smear to HPV testing? Emmeline Berger has evaluated the cost effectiveness of different strategies in screening. Uh, could you first explain what is, is HPV and what is the difference between pap smear and HPV testing? HPV is a very common sexually transmitted infection. 90% um, of women will have had an HPV infection throughout the course of their lifetime. Most HPV infections will go away on their own, but many can stay around and what we call they'll persist. Mm -hmm. So um, a persistent HPV infection has been implicated in cervical cancer and is the main cause of cervical cancer. Um, currently, we use pap smear screening every three years in Norway. Women can uh, go to their gynecologist and have a pap smear exam taken. Uh, HPV testing is taken in the same, same manner. HPV testing can also be taken at home, so it might add an additional benefit for some women who might not want to attend a gynecological exam. Can you explain why there has been some controversy regarding switching to HPV testing in Norway? Um, I think cervical cancer screening has, has been so beneficial through the use of pap smear screening that many countries around the world, including Norway, are very hesitant uh, before they switch to primary HPV testing. Mm -hmm. The evidence is building, but I think we need to be extremely sure that, it, that we're correct in our evidence. Um, also, how do we inform women that they're positive for a sexually transmitted infection? Prior, we just informed them regarding whether they had cellular changes. Now we're actually informing them explicitly whether they have a sexually transmitted infection. Women are not so educated surrounding HPV, so we need to make sure that this doesn't create more anxiety for them. C could you have this uh, virus for a long period? Let let's say this woman uh, is, is uh, married uh, for many years. Could she get the virus before she got married? That's exactly the, the point. You, you can have a virus for many years without knowing about it. And then you go for, and you've been in a relationship with a monogamous partner, and you can go and you can detect HPV. But without knowing that you can have had the infection for a long time, some women might start questioning where they con contracted this infection. Could you tell me about the results you got from your analysis? Yes, first we wanted to look at a strategy that has been proposed by the Norwegian authorities, which involved younger women continuing to be screened every three years with pap smear, and at age 34 they would switch to primary HPV testing. We found that it would not only be less costly, but it would be more beneficial if women switched at age 34 to primary HPV testing. And, and secondly, we wanted to analyze whether you could switch even earlier and if it would be beneficial. We found that you could actually switch at age 31 to primary HPV testing and continue up until age 69. Screening much younger than that, the HPV infection is too prevalent in the population, meaning too many women will have an infection that will go away on its own and, and won't help us determine whether we should follow them, them up more carefully. You've used a mathematical mod model uh, to, uh, for your anal analysis. Uh, how does this relate to the reality? It's a good question. We have um, used a mathematical model which models the natural history of cervical cancer. We use input data from the Norwegian Cancer Registry and from Norwegian-based studies to try and uh, simulate what happens actually here in Norway. So model-based analyses are never actually what's happening in real life, but we hope that they're as close as we can come and they're a great way to analyze many different strategies concurrently that you couldn't do within a real clinical setting. Thank you.